freaking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for this week's Valero Texas Open. Joining me to break it all down, Patrick McDonald is here. Patrick, good day. Good day. What's going on, gang? Uh, tough scene out there for the golfers, our athletes crowd, uh, with what happened on the 18th green there at TPC San Antonio. But outside that, um, some fun golf and uh, an unexpected, exciting tournament. Greg Ducharm is here. Hello, Greg. Hey, hello, boys. Um, I mean, maybe if he had taken his shirt off and taped up right there on the 18th hole, he could have redeemed the golfers or athletes thing. But I, I don't know. But all in all, what a week. I mean, Rory McIlroy came in third place. Spoiler alert. And lost by nine. <laughs> this was an incredible day. And you're right, Patrick. It was unexpected. It was electric. It was the final nine was electric. That will not stop people from wondering why we are not starting on time. Uh, the big potato would love it if we were on time for once. All right, big potato, take here's, a lap, pal. Here's the big <laughs> potato. We decide what on time is, right? Like we we say, hey, the show's going to start at this time. It's going to start at that time. Like that's what happens. Also, we're not just sitting around like picking our noses back here. Just wait. We're just waiting. We'll Literally, go. Uh, <laughs> second, the thing, the thing ended. Final putt drops. Boom. HQ. The second I'm done HQ, we're here. We're tr we're podding, bro. We're more than just podcasters, big potato. We're people too. <laughs> just keep that in mind. Yes, we are humans. Uh, so be nice. Okay. Wow. Um, you know we were. We could go through the whole like, oh, you know, here were some uh, moving day rounds and things that uh, – no, we're going to just go straight to the back nine because that is when this thing started, and it was really kind of over. Akshay Batia, who entered the day with a four-shot lead, birdies his first two holes, birdies the fourth. He makes the turn in three under. Greg, this is a dream start. It's all over. It, it's all it's over at that point. You're absolutely right, Rick. I mean, when you have a lead like that and all of a sudden you can hit a wedge tight on the very first hole, uh, take care of the par five at the second, you're you're in complete control and you you reach 17 and then 18 under. How are how are you going to catch that? It just doesn't seem possible. So he Akshay seemed calm. He seemed in control. And he did exactly what he had to do. He did not look defensive early on. Uh, he was aggressive and smart at the same time, which was the perfect balance. He did everything he had to do. He had that look in his eye, Patrick. I did not think that there was, like, I didn't see him coughing it up. He didn't. We'll, we'll get to how they got to a playoff in a second. But he, like Greg said, I thought he looked confident. The game looked sharp. He kept the, he kept the gas on the pedal for as long as he needed to. This, this was an impressive, not only 18, but just a truly magnificent first night. Yeah, if you, if you would have told him that, uh, you know, he, he shoots 67 with a four-stroke lead and he has to make a putt at the end to force a playoff, he would have told you that you were crazy. I wrote it. I think I might be responsible here because I pre-wrote the gamer a little early. Even after the two-shot swing on 10, I'm like, there's no way this is going to be close. Denny, I mean, he's four back at the moment. Akshay, he looks so steady all week. I mean, the golf came so easy to him the entire week, and then all of a sudden, you know, he he misses a couple short putts right on 10 and then another on 17 that, that uh, would have really slammed the door shut. And Denny's just making everything chipping in Tita green. I mean, we talk about him as a putter Tita green. It was unbelievable today from Denny. And uh, I mean, a back nine 28 is just silly with everything on the line. Um, Patrick, you mentioned a couple short putts. I mean, 10 and 17, that they're, that's like pretty far apart. You know, and I agree they were short misses and he could have made them. Uh, but, it's not like it it started a demise. You know, it it never felt like okay, Akshay's losing it here. He he missed a short one. He should have gotten that up and down on 10. 
Um, he doesn't, but he birdies 11 immediately following that. And then birdies 14. Great bunker shot. Uh, some really nice up and downs. It, it wasn't like a, sometimes a, a miss putt like that on 10 can get you feeling like things are snowballing out of control. And that was not the case for Akshay. There was still, he was still playing offense after that, which amazed me. Denny McCarthy saw that six shot lead with nine to go and said, hold my beer. Watch this. He puts up a video game second nine. This is straight out of a video game. This is birdies on 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, that's eight of the final nine holes. He was rolling in everything, Patrick. You mentioned the chip in was just dead in the heart. And after each one of these circles, he's putting on the card. He's chipping away. He's chipping away. That confidence in Akshay's eyes is turning a little bit to, to concern, a little bit to worry. And Denny is in fuego. Yeah, I thought we were in the midst of something special with that tee shot on 12 to like three feet mm. closest all week. And it's like, all right, this guy's going to get going. He hits a decent pitch there on 14. The par five connects there. At that point, it's like he's got to have all of these to have a chance. Uh, and then there on the par three 16th, if you want to say Akshay got nervous at all during this back nine, it felt like on that tee, he got a little bit nervy. Denny puts it close 12 feet underneath. Akshay has probably his worst swing of the entire week, but then he gets up and up and down, saves par, avoids that two shot swing. And Denny rolls his in from 12 feet. And I'll be honest, once Denny made his putt on 18, I thought he won. I legit, I legitimately thought he won. So, so there's, there's a lot here. So Greg, the, the shot on 13, which is the long par three. Yeah. He hits to a couple of, I mean, it's like 251 yards. Denny hits after backing off and not sure he has the right club to recommit and, and stuff that to a couple of feet. I was, that's when I was like, Okay, just inject this finish right now. Well, that was fascinating because um, if you were watching on the broadcast, Denny was talking about the wind with help, I and mean, he had five iron. Now, 251, don't think Denny McCarthy hits a five iron 251. Right? If you're watching on YouTube, you can see there's a lot of green between the front edge and the flag. So he's trying to land that somewhere around front edge. But the wind gauge on the broadcast is showing into the wind. And they're playing for help. And so you're thinking as he's over the ball, okay, he's got this wrong. And then he backs off and they discuss. I don't know why we're feeling that. It's there. Just trust it. And boy, did he ever. Because he hit a absolutely flawless shot in there. Um, and that was a that was a, a big, big moment on a 251-yard par three. Then so this is the whole, I'll stay here with you, Greg, because Patrick had mentioned it. Th this is the, 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 the final part three, the next part three, 16, uh, Denny stuffs one close. This is, this is the miss from Akshay. I mean, short, yeah. right, weak, ugly. You can't really see it from here, but that, that greens, I don't know, a couple feet elevated. So he's got to hit like a little spinny little guy up there. He gets it, gets it up and down, but we're, we're now engaged in a full on battle. Well, I think there's a couple things. One, that bunker in the middle of that green, which is just a couple paces behind that flag stick, is you're not getting up and down from there. Right? That is no no zone. So that puts Akshay in a difficult club situation. Nine is too much. Pitching wedge is not enough. He goes with pitching wedge. Seems like he tries to hit it a little harder. And Denny's Denny shot in there absolutely, which Denny had a much more comfortable club. It seemed like with the nine iron, uh, and and hitting that into the absolutely perfect spot with his ability on the greens was uh, it definitely put pressure on Akshay. But his his ability to get it up and down showed the calmness that I mean it made me so happy to see because now you got a tight lie, you got an elevated green. Uh, you're all of a sudden going from, well, I can play, I can play defense to, okay, this is getting, this is getting real now. I'm, I could be in trouble. If I don't get this up and down, I'm in trouble. 
And he does. He steps up. There weren't a lot of big pressure moments for him up until this point. Um, the, uh, this was the, this was the first big time pressure moment for him, uh, th- in my opinion. And he gets it up and down. Eighteen. And Patrick, you mentioned this. Uh, this is the first time in in regulation here. So we're still we're still lugging Brendan Todd along with us here in this group. <laughs> both both Akshay and Denny lay up. Uh, they hit good ones. Denny twelve and a half feet. Akshay eleven and a half feet. Denny rolls his in to finish and complete the 28. You said you thought it was over because you thought Akshay was going to miss and that was going to be it, right? And Denny was going to just heartbreak steal this thing away. That would have been the order of operations, correct? But I'm glad you brought up Brendan Todd. Talk about stealing the spotlight on the 18th hole. I mean, good for him. He literally said, you know what? It's Brendan Todd's time. And he went for it. He spent, I think, three hours over that wedge shot into the 18th green. I digress. I mean, Denny's putt was just, it felt like once he hit it, it was destined to fall into the bottom of the cup. It was oh, so pure. It was perfect. Perfect. It was just perfect. The cups could have been half the size today, and he still would have made everything. It was so pure. And then, I mean, the guts for Akshay. I mean, your world has to be moving a like so fast internally your mind has to be racing you just get steamrolled by a back <laughs> nine 28 seven straight birdies and you're like how the hell do i have an 11 footer to force a playoff slept on a four stroke lead was four under up to that point played really good nearly flawless golf pretty much all week and you're like holy hell you beat third place by nine, by nine. They pretty much doubled up the field, <laughs> and and he's got he's got to make an eleven footer after missing a pretty short one on seventeen, and so to come back there and, and drain it. I mean, balls really. It, it, it took a lot of balls. All that, Greg. All of that, right? You you are watching this this thing leave your body and. You are no longer in the lead. That putt, Denny's in at 20. This putt is to get you to 20. You're like the the, the ability for him to step up there and roll that thing in. I I agree with Patrick. I thought there was zero chance he was making that putt. Well, I'll tell you this much. I, I actually thought Denny won when I checked shot. I'm watching. And before they are up to the green, I'm like, okay, this is first in wins. Who's mm-hmm. away? Denny's away by a foot. This is over. That's what I'm thinking. And then Denny pours it in the middle, as expected. And it's all, yeah, this is, this is over. Because you're, the, the situation changes so fast. Like you have played, you have been in the, a, with a significant lead the entire tournament. And a birdie has been a bonus. You haven't been in a, a single situation where you have to make this. Or even, I mean, he might have felt like he had to get up and down on 16. He might have felt like he had to get up and down on 14, but probably not. Well, now it's, it's come all the way to this and you have to make it. And he, and he does. And it's the, it's not Danny McCarthy's strength is his putter. If you didn't believe it before you saw it now, by the way, on that note, it was really cool to see Danny McCarthy putt in contention like that Mm. because we've seen him be a great putter statistically but you haven't really seen him be dangerous with it because he he hasn't contended that often and all of a sudden it you see the weapon on full display and that i thought that was really cool akshay rolls it in forces a playoff and that's (laughs) that's just where the fun begins okay brutal scene that's just where the fun begins because Akshay gives us the fist bump, the fist pump. Then I guess to his caddy goes for a fist bump, a little too aggressive for somebody with recurring shoulder situations. And he says, quote, his shoulder popped in and popped or popped out and popped back in. Dislocated. 
I'm not a doctor. Sounds crappy. Sounds not good. Um, but when we come back for a commercial and they are trucking back to the to the 18th tee to start this playoff, Akshay's grabbing his shoulder and giving Ken Tackett the number of his of his physio. That's where we're at. I thought he wrote down his dinner order. It's like, oh, you guys are getting something to go. I thought he was, I thought he was WD, right? <laughs> he was, I was like, why does he have a scorecard out? Like, why is he like, is he, what is he handing Ken Tackett? Like, why is he giving him? I thought he was like taking his card and giving it up and like walking off the golf course. I can't believe he, he pretty much called a timeout. He was playing four corners and he had to go behind. I think they oh. went b- behind the electronic scoreboard. Hold on a second. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Greg, that, now there is now you look at this. One guy has just shot a 28. One guy has just made seven straight birdies. The other guy just injured himself celebrating like a true athlete that he is. Again, we are in – this is Denny's now. This is Denny's to lose. Yeah, even more so. Uh, but then Akshay stripes his tee shot right down the middle. You know, I was really worried about the tee shot. And then he he lays up, which was wise. Then he misses the fairway, has to lay up. Uh, but I, I thought Akshay, once he hit his layup into the fairway, was kind of in the clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, be, you know, because now, all right, you just hit a full a full tee shot, and now you got eighty five yards. And that's when they that that's when they go tape it up. So I, I give him credit real quick, Rick. I, I give him a lot of credit because that situation, I'm like. This is going to take forever. And it, it really didn't. It could have taken a whole lot longer, I thought. This was such a bizarre scene. So so both players lay up to Denny's 99 yards out, Akshay's 80-something yards out. Denny hits it in the water. Just a full-on chili dip type mm. situation. From 99 yards hits it into the creek. So now advantage Akshay. And we are, I mean, we're, we're in the group, Patrick. We've got the audio. The, the physio comes out to Akshay. He wants to get it taped up. They turn to Ken Tackett and say like, you know, uh, I want to, I want to get my shoulder taped up. I got to take my shirt off. Where can I do this in private? (laughs) Are any of the dressing rooms available? (laughs) This now, this is a guy who has taken his shirt off on the golf course before. <laughs> he loves it. Multiple times he's taken his shirt off. He's getting a little shy now. But I have never seen this is truly it was truly a timeout. I have never seen anything like this, right? Where he could actually say, Okay, I, I'm gonna get treatment. I need it taped up. We are going to we're gonna go over here behind the scoreboard, take my shirt off and get taped. I've never seen anything like that. I'm I'm with Greg where it was like you just pumped one 300 down the middle and now you got to get taped for this 90 yard wedge shot. And even there on the broadcast, they were like, oh, this is a mistake. What is he doing? This could also, ruin everything. Also, the guy you're playing against just hit one in the water. Just go up there and like hit it. Just, yeah. yeah, You don't even have to do anything special. I am yeah. a little dis- disappointed where I wanted like more of a uh, – I don't know, but yeah. Well, more. Wait, hold on. More of what? What did you want more of? I, I kind of wish the broadcast covered it better. I went straight to commercial, right. at least on mine, right? Not on the NBC Sports app because mine doesn't work, but on the <laughs> Peacock app, it just cut straight to commercial. And I was like, this is all we're getting. And then he popped up. He was fine. And he had his wet shot to, what was it, like six feet? Yeah, they almost, they almost like missed him coming back because it 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 was the fastest i didn't even know you could tape a shoulder that fast i don't know what goes into taping a shoulder but it 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 did not take long it didn't take long at all and and he was back like uh, it seemed like he was walking all the way across the fairway yeah and then all of a sudden they come back from commercial he's mid backswing yeah he's shirts back tucked in he's over his golf ball he's about to hit it's unbelievable and then he stuffs it greg then he stuffs it to a couple feet and yeah i guess i guess he knows what he's doing go get it taped up i mean that at that point all he has to do is get it on the green yeah you know like i mean denny mccarthy hit so far behind that ball it it landed in the middle of the water (laughs) 
I can't believe it. I was texting a buddy of mine and I was like, oh, that's the classic se- post seven birdie in a row mess up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it always, always and, pops out uh, after I make seven birdies in a row. Yeah, oh, yeah. I can never get to eight. I felt I felt <laughs> sick for him, but it definitely, <laughs> it definitely made that shot for Akshay a, a whole lot easier. Now it's like a warm up, you know, a warm up shot. Like you just got to the golf course, your shoulders taped, and you got to hit an 85 yard shot. Piece of cake. Yeah. Piece of cake makes the putt, wins for the second time on the PGA Tour. But this is, this is a big boy. This gets you into the Masters, and it's Denny McCarthy who is uh, getting buzzsawed. So here's, here's, here's the stat they gained 21 strokes to the field today, both of them. Akshay and Denny, they both cannot win. That would have been good enough. 21 strokes gained to win each of the last 167 PGA Tour events. That includes all majors. The last time that would not have been enough to win. Any guesses? Um, so somebody else who won by a ton? It would have won the last 167. Joaquin Neiman Genesis? Not a bad guess. Um, not Dustin correct. Johnson, TPC Boston. No, not a bad guess either, but not, not correct. Mm. I thought Greg might get it. Oh, um, God. yeah, I do oh. have a year. Go ahead, Greg. Mm, oh. No, I was definitely wrong. The math doesn't add up. Uh, Bryson at winged foot. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Bryson at 2020, 2020 Bryson at winged foot was uh, he gains like 22 to the field. Remember, he won by six, and then it's a major, so you usually get a wider mm. amount of, of guys that are that are uh, playing. So, yes, it was Bryson. Bryson gained like 22 strokes. So that, that unfortunately, uh, is the example, one billion, of how hard it is to win golf tournaments. Uh, I mean, th- you anyway. could think about this from, bo- from two perspectives. Right? If you're Akshay, you have a four-shot lead, you go shoot 67 and you end up in a playoff. If you're Denny McCarthy, you're in the final group. You make seven birdies in a row and shoot 28 on the back nine and you're in a playoff. I mean, both are unbelievable. And Denny McCarthy missed two putts on the front nine from six feet at two and three. Mm-hmm. Oh, just, I, I mean, just to be clear, so the P, the uh, the broadcast was touting you know the greatest single putting week ever. Ninety two, Rick. I don't know if you knew. BS. <laughs> Total putts is not a stat to decide if you are a good putter or not. Uh, he was seventh in approach this week, and he was phenomenal. He was like number one in tee to green on Sunday. He he was hitting the cover off the ball. I don't care how many putts it took. He was absolutely hitting the cover off the ball. Yeah, he was third for the week in strokes game putting. Yeah, but tenth, tenth third, on third, the day third for the week, Greg, not the greatest putting performance ever assembled. No, 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 no. But he you, did have. I mean, the the total putts is cra- It is crazy. I agree. Twenty twenty one putts in round one. Twenty four in round two. Twenty five in yeah. round three. Twenty two in round four it's crazy but it's also it was also crazy when camp smith had like 19 putts and shot over par one time because he just missed every green and chipped them all to one foot yeah i was gonna mention that's the problem with the stat with the stat yeah he was hitting them to the fringe like just off it was awesome it was it was actually (laughs) it looked like he was doing it on purpose it was incredibly compelling to watch yeah like so we used to play this game uh it was called the monkey Right, it, it would be like an additional game in a match you're playing, and the last person to three putt on each nine holes gets the monkey. Mm-hmm. And so, if you um, if you three putt on eight, I mean, you could have seven three putts on one through eight, and somebody else three putts nine, they get the monkey. That's five bucks or whatever you decide at the beginning. And so you get all these. Somebody's got. Uh, they leave a little meat on the bone. Everybody's going. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, it's really fun but anytime you hit it on the fringe 
<laughs> Anytime you hit it on the fridge, we called it monkey management. Monkey <laughs> management. Monkey management. <laughs> That's good. Oh, it's so funny. That's pretty good. Um, unbelievable back nine. Akshay Batia uh, wins, gets the mill and a half, gets into the Masters. Amazing stuff. Denny, sorry, winning continues to be very difficult. We'll hit two quick ones, then we'll move on to kind of Masters stuff here. But that solo third, 11 under, that's Rory McIlroy. And Patrick, uh, have you seen enough? Uh, are you excited about what you saw here? From Rory, who shoots a 66 on Sunday um, as he heads into next week, trying to do the complete uh, complete the career Grand Slam. I will not be a member of the Rory roll call this major uh, after the open. He broke my heart. I can't go back to him right away. But two things really stuck out to me. It's never like encouraging when you do the practice takeaway. You, you throw that into the repertoire the week before the masters mm. but one his irons did take a nice step in the right direction he gained what almost two strokes around he was great today in particular as well i think he was second in the field um and then two the miss that has been his bugaboo the first three months it started in dubai on the 72nd hole against tommy fleetwood that quick aggressive one to the left and you can't get around Augusta national with that one. Rory McIlroy of all people understands that if you want to look at some of his uh, greatest hits from Augusta national, so to speak. And I saw, I didn't see too much of yesterday's round and I know he missed one fairway badly to the left, but for the most part, the misses were generally to the right and you can play golf all day, eliminating one side of the fairway. It's very, it's less aggressive, the right miss. And then he also got the big number out of the picture outside of a double bogey yesterday. He, he was great. And to go in with a bogey free round. I mean, it's, it's great prep for Rory McIlroy. Fantastic prep. You don't win, but you do everything right. But we also saw this last year at the match play when he finished third and then missed the cut immediately at the masters. So I'm not part of the roll call, but I'm optimistic. Not only did he eliminate the big number, which Greg, that's something that you've been very uh, keen on this year. He only made three bogeys. That's the fewest number of bogeys in the field this week. So yeah. cleaning it up, maybe passing the sniff test a little bit. Yeah. He still has a double bogey or worse in every tournament he's played this year. He did do that. Yeah. I mean, but it was on the first hole yesterday, and he rebounded and kept everything under control after that, and his bogey free today. Patrick, uh, um, the takeaway. Mm -hmm. there's See, this, you could look at it from one viewpoint and say, okay, this is another change right before the Masters. Like last year, we're going to put a new driver shaft in play, go to a shorter driver, and we're going to go to a blade putter. The, last year, those things were... They felt very unnecessary. Mm -hmm. This this is a move to solve a specific problem, and it comes from Butch Harmon. And if there's one thing that Butch Harmon knows how to do, it's how to get players ready to compete in tournaments. And he keeps things very simple. Um, this is very similar to what Butch did with Webb Simpson before he won the 2019 uh, 2020 Waste Management Phoenix Open. Very similar, a simple takeaway move. And I, I think you can play golf with that mm -hmm. because it's something in the takeaway. It's not very complicated. It's just a very simple feeling early in the swing. And, and you can play with that. In fact, I, I think it's important to have a, a thought as long as it's simple. And I think this is. So ultimately, that's, that is a good sign to me. His ball striking, a good sign, in my opinion. I, I don't know if Rory's going to win the Masters because uh, my instinct says no. Uh, but it, it, I, I think the form is certainly there to um, put him in contention. Masters is just so different for him. <sighs> yeah, I wish I could uh, wipe his brain of all the memories. Maybe that would that would help. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to recap the bets and the one in time. 
And then we are going to turn our attention to a little event that is happening next happening next week in Augusta, Georgia. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. The PGA Tour returns with the RBC Heritage, April 20th on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. And we're back. Uh, recap the bets in the one and done. I don't have all the fancy graphics because producer Josh is not here, but I have the results and I can read them off because I know how to read at least a little bit. Matchups. We did very well on matchups. Uh, I had a winner. And Greg had a winner. Alex Noren over Colin Morikawa. Greg went with Max Homer. Homa over Colin Morikawa. Greg, Colin finished, I'm pretty sure, last of the guys who made the cut. No, he didn't. He finished T75, four rounds in the 70s. 70, 74, 75, 74. Mm. Oh, boy. Not looking good. We talked about him on Thursday, and I thought there were some positive signs. Um, immediately after in Friday's round, those left misses with irons were back. Things are not looking good for, for Colin Morikawa. So we both picked on him. I'm happy to pick up the, uh, the win, a much needed win. Yes, we did get the, the win there. Colin lost two strokes on approach 70th and lost five and a half putting. Yeah. Without a superpower, he's just an yeah. average Joe. He's just a Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. He's just a mild manner reporter. He needs that. Uh, he needs the iron. The putting's almost irrelevant if you don't have the iron play. Uh, Patrick, you're a loser. Thank you. I'm sure, people have told you before, but it was close. Very direct. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't get anything for it, but it was close. You had Spieth over Fitz. Um, excuse me, Spieth over Hideki. Spieth finished T10, but you lost because Hideki finished seventh. And that was a two shot difference. Both guys played really well. Yeah, I kind of wanted something on Spieth, uh, and and I went against Hideki, who's playing some of the best golf in the world at the moment. So <laughs> dumb in hindsight, some would say, but I think I'd do it all over again. The consolation prize is the Lucas Glover top forty that you got for your finishing position. He you finished twenty fifth, and Greg and I are the losers. Because we had Lucas Glover to finish inside the top 20 and Chris John Bezayden to finish inside the top 20. And Greg, they both finished T25 one shot out. Ugh. Killer. Christian uh, needed birdie on 18. Didn't get it, um, which is disappointing. Hit a bad wedge shot over into Brendan Todd territory. Yeah. So that was really disappointing. But um, he barely made the cut. I mean, I thought for a while he was going to miss the cut. Yeah, he played well on Saturday and got back into it. Right. He shot 73-71, so he was uh, oh, he was at even. So he was going to make it, but not looking good for a top 20. And, and it was just one shot out of it. And Glover, man, he played some really good golf, too. He, he started the tournament three over through three. Yeah, then he played well. Then he, he bogeyed 18 today. He not only bogeyed mm -hmm. 18 but he made double on 12 as well. So oh. it's like a really cool and fun situation. <laughs> well, so, uh, I Patrick took a, took a little off the odds for a little safety, a little peace of mind. Rick, I have a, a hockey group chat and one of the guys uh, texted in. I know we were talking a little puck, a little puck last you're, time. You're a little puck head. Uh, one of my buddies was watching PGA tour live and he sent, sent a text. Haven't watched a ton of golf in my life, but the two worst putts I've ever seen on the PGA Tour are both today from Lucas Glover. Yep, <laughs> that's honestly he could have he could have sent that text any time in the last ten years, and it could have been true. Yeah. Uh, who's your who's your hockey team of choice? I'm I'm a Penguins fan. Uh, yeah, I'm a yeah. Flyers fan, so we've got a little bad blood, a little beef. Yeah, a little beef. I'm not really that big of a Flyers fan. Or hockey. They're both fun. They're both fun teams. Broad Street Bullies. It's been a long time since then. We did not have Akshay on the outright card for any of us. The extra 50 best bets. Greg, how did this not win? Matty uh, Schmid. He had, laid an egg over the weekend. You had Matty Schmid top 40. He started 69-72, and then he went 73-76 on the weekend. Oh, yeah. no. He made, an, he made an eight on eight today. 
It was a lot. I mean, this was the lock of all. That's why it was my best bet. It was going to happen. It, it was, uh, hey, they, I guess when the lines speak, I should listen. Right, Rick? Oh, that's right. I'm now yeah. two for two on lines speaking to me. That's, mm -hmm. that's right. I, maybe he was so, he, his odds were so long for that for a reason. We found that out today the hard way. Uh, I did get Corey Connors to be the top Canadian plus 110 over Pendrith, Svensson, Silverman, and Sloan. So that's a winner. And then Patrick, your boy, John Rom. Rombo. Yeah, boy. You bet him at plus 650. He played well, but not well enough to overtake Dean Burmeister. Not well enough to get himself into a playoff with he and Sergio Garcia. He finished in a tie for fourth, three shots off the lead. Yeah, we got to talk about Sergio Garcia's Twitter activity this week, by the way. How was he's, it? Oh, he's posting like, obviously not him, maybe his wife or someone from his team. But like every moment from the tournament, they're posting on his Twitter. I'm gonna look missed, a four, missed a four-footer on the last hole to win the tournament, which uh, which was unfortunate. But yeah, Mean Dean, Machine, Burmeester with the win, John Rahm, disappointing. I was wondering how you knew it wasn't him tweeting. But it's literally just a bunch of videos of him playing. Yes. Like in the he's moment. Like, he's like, oh, I'm so pumped for this playoff. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, dial, dialed and ready. Like, and no. that was post missing a four footer to win on the last hole. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so ready for this. <laughs> That's funny. Um, one and done. I don't have the final numbers, but I will tell you that I had Matt Fitzpatrick. Kyle and Josh had Corey Connors. Patrick probably won the week, right? With Ludwig. No, Fitzpatrick beat no, him. No, you. Yeah. Oh, well, excuse me. Dude, then. Horrible Sunday. Horrible. The yeah. back nine. Oh, my gosh. Ludwig just... 70, 73, including a 38 on the back nine. Matt Fitzpatrick, a mm -hmm. 67 to finish T10. Great pick. Yep. Mark had Billy Horschel, who missed the cut. Hate, hate that. Real shame. Uh, Greg, you had Alex Norin who finished T14. Yeah, Pick. right there. One one shot out of uh, Fitzpatrick. One shot behind Fitzy. So I think I saw Fitzy got like 223,000. So that would have been the winning the winning amount for us. Uh, and then we'll have Josh tabulate all this stuff and we'll see run your pool and find out where we all stand. Fun. Tough. I don't Tough. have I don't do the math. I don't keep the sheet. Um, no, this is tough because T10, these used to be really meaningful. I know. Right? You get like a T10. That's a big deal. Doesn't matter. Not anymore. A T10 at a non-signature event, it, you might as well just miss the cut. Who cares? Yeah. But, don't pick anyone. It really does feel that way. <laughs> Save your guys. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't you have a strong feeling. No, they're going to win. Yeah. We're taking a bye. <laughs> Team McDonald's taking a bye this week. <laughs> Okay, gents. Well, here's what we're going to do. We obviously have a lot, a lot of Masters content coming next week, but we just certainly cannot help ourselves to talk about a couple of storylines uh, right now. And we are going to do that after we take a quick word from our partners. It's time for the madness. And CBS Sports HQ has your wall-to-wall -wall NCAA tournament coverage. We got your game highlights, expert analysis, and insights all the way to the final four. Start and end your March Madness coverage with CBS Sports HQ. And we're back. I will declare it Masters Week officially right now. We are off and running. It's Major Championship Week. There are plenty of storylines. I have not asked you for these in advance, so I'm going to hope that you guys have been just ruminating on some things. I would like to know the one, you can only choose one thing that you are most interested in for next week. And we will start with Greg because he looks more prepared. Mm. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a couple of things. So yep. narrowing it down to one is a, is a challenge. You only get one. Uh, and that's the thing I, that I guess I got to th put a little thought into. Mm -hmm. I, I think the number one thing is how does Rory McIlroy perform on, on Thursday specifically? And then that trans transitions into Friday. And how does he perform? Uh, if he passes that test, how does he perform Saturday? How does he perform Sunday? Look, he's going for the career Grand Slam. Uh, he is still one of the very best players in the world. Uh, we've seen Rory come into the Masters in great form uh, and play terrible. We've seen him come in in uh, kind of 
average for him and play great. Uh, and and his entire season, no matter what else happens, comes down to this week. It's a extremely high amount of pressure, and I I feel like there's a calmness with him. So I'm very curious to see what we get. Um, I don't like the bouncing around of all the different strategies, but I, I do think this one works. Um, and because of his form coming in, playing your way into it, he showed really positive signs. I think he answered a lot of questions, and now it's it's time to see if if he can do it at the only place that matters for him. I do think that the biggest storyline is Rory trying to win the career grand slam. And, and I know that there's a lot of other great stuff. Rom in defense, Scotty Scheffler's tiger esque performance, tiger himself, the live guys and the PGA guys all together in one spot. I get that. But Patrick, there are five guys in the modern game who have accomplished this career feat and we are getting a chance at it with a guy who has the second shortest odds. This is not a ceremonial attempt where he's 150 to one and he has no chance to win it. This is a true opportunity to make that list six. And I also think there's a pretty good chance no one ever wins the career grand slam again. Ooh. And Rory might be the last guy who ever gets on there. So Greg, Rory McRoy's last 10 first rounds, he's broken 70 once. That was 2018. He was in the final group on Sunday with Patrick Reed. His last five first rounds, Reed, 72, 73, 76, 75, 73. Yeah. Did you see the forecast for next week? Ugly. Maybe rain, maybe needs a little distraction, right? Just mud it up, you know, worry about the rain gear, not think about just winning a career. I got other things to focus on. I hope he pulls out the all tan. Oh. Nike rain gear. I hate if he it. does, he's going to win. That's his it only chance. The worst look I have ever seen. It's terrible. Rain imagine, gear needs to be dark. Imagine yeah. wearing that and then having to put the green jacket over it. It's <laughs> horrendous. I hate it so much. Um, I am looking. I'm going to kind of zag here, guys, for, for my one storyline. It's a guy we haven't seen in a while because he was actually on the PGA Tour this season and then moved to live golf. I'm looking forward to the war that is Augusta National and Terrell Hatton. We missed him at Bay Hill. That was like his his domain, his big stage, just you know, shooting the lake, flicking things off, objects, potentially people, maybe even kids. I don't know. And now we get him at Augusta National, a golf course he has publicly said he does not like. So I'm it's your number to one thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just pumped to see him go against against Augusta National. Not my number one thing, but like my number one uh, side side quest kind of. So he, okay. he, played, he played well this week. Yeah, um, he could have won. Also, I I hate these things. I hate these like average trends or whatever. I but love them. I did see, and I might butcher the numbers, but I did see that uh, the average winner of the Masters is like 32 years old ranked 18th in the world and wins it on their eighth try or something like that. And Terrell Hatton is like 32 years old, 18th in the world and playing it for the eighth time or something. Like he like, he's the guy that the silly trend loves. The, the problem with silly trends is especially if you, depending on how far back you go, like the, the prime has changed drastically. It used to be, well, you play in your 20s uh, and you kind of get your feet under you. And in your 30s, you start winning. And maybe you stay or hang around in your 40s. But really, your 30s are your prime. Now, you're like almost on the tail end. If you're 35, you're on like the tail end. These guys seem old. So that has been a big shift, I think, affect some of those averages. But it, it's interesting nonetheless. If he wears this on Thursday, we are in big trouble. Backwards hat included. I green hate, jackets would love it. Hate the tan on tan. I like it. No, I don't like He's it. Wearing a I, like a onesie. I like it. No, monochromatic is in. Okay, well you could do. You could go with all the same, but it's got to be navy blue, black, 
<laughs> that's what rain gear is. What about all white? That might be cool. No. Looks like a painter. He looked like a caddy. He looked like a, he looked like a caddy. I, I separate myself from Greg. <laughs> he would look like a caddy. That would be freaking hilarious. <laughs> I separate myself from Greg because I don't care if it's black or dark or whatever. I just do not like that brown or what <laughs> I can, whatever it is. I just hate it. Maybe dark green. What if you just wore green? I think you, you could do that. I'd be fine with that. I'd be fine. With that. Uh, I'm not. It's just it's rain gear. Like it's that means that it's raining out. That means that it's going to be muddy. So that's where the the brown just doesn't look good. But you that's why you can't go all all white rain gear. You look like that big, doesn't make sense. A big brown, big brown guy is what you look like. <laughs> like, like a old. big bear. <laughs> yeah, like a big bear. Big bear. Uh, I will say, um, this is probably the best chance in a while of a debutante potentially winning. Twenty of them, and out of eighty-nine, and t- like two of them have got to be in the top ten of the odds board. Yeah, with Wyndham and Ludwig, those were the two that I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. And now you add Akshay, a lefty, into the mix. Oh man, those gotta... those butter cuts on those dog leg right to lefts. Who's who's next after those three? Uh, Austin Eckroat. You right. have Denny McCarthy, Adam Shank, uh, top five player in the world, Matthew Pavon. Um, I don't know if he's still top five in the FedEx Cup. I'm not quite sure, but uh. Yeah, Nick Dunlap. I could keep on going. No, that's okay. What Grayson else? Murray. What else is uh what else is on your list, Greg? Um, well, Scotty Scheffler is absolutely on my list. Uh and and the general concept of the the best players in the world not playing very well. Mm-hmm. Like this this idea, which I say jokingly, Scotty and the long shots has really been the theme of the year. And I'm curious with uh, the guys like Jordan Spieth, guys like Rory McIlroy, um, guys even on even guys like John Rahm and and Brooks Kepka, who haven't seen a whole lot of. Right? What are they going to bring to the table? Are are we going to see Augusta National and its course history? You know the the stickiness of its course history bring some of these guys back from a place that is not great. Or are we going to see Scotty in the long shots again uh, and on this leaderboard? And um, I'm just fascinated to see how that all plays out. Because Scotty has is so clearly the best player in the world. It's been a long time since we've seen some... I mean, the, the last time we've seen that is was Tiger Woods, where it is a clear, undisputed best player in the world. If you could choose, Patrick, one golfer, you decide tonight for any reason that you want. It doesn't have to be financial. In fact, I'd prefer it not be financial. I'd prefer it not be professional. Who do you want to win the Masters? Who do you, not who you think, who would you want to win the Masters? This one may come as a surprise. Xander Shoffley. (laughs) <laughs> I'm serious. I would I would love for him to break through. Why? I think I think the players championship was the best thing. I've done the mental gymnastics. I've done the Simone Biles routine in my head. I've come to terms that the players championship was the best thing that could happen for him. And all when you talk to PGA Tour players and they you ask them like who's the guy, they all say Xander Shoffley. They're like his game's so good. He's going to win tons of major championships. How about you step up to the plate and finally do it then? So he's my guy. Greg, who do you want? Desires. Look deep into your heart and tell me who you want to win the Masters. Um, so there are three guys that I, I I don't know how to decipher between. It's like Greg has, you know, he's got Russell Hanley. Kids. He's got multiple kids, so he has to love them all equally. He can't just he, he can't just give me one. Oh, well, with kids, it's easy. <laughs> this, is a lot, this is a lot harder to decide. <laughs> this is between Scotty, Spieth, and Rory. Right there. For Rory McIlroy to win the career Grand Slam, that would be absolutely incredible. Um, 
and I just I love watching Jordan Spieth play, and I want him to win another major. Um, Jordan's probably third on the list, quite frankly. I, I think it's important to have a star in the game. I respect Scotty's game so much, and to see him win another Masters would be awesome. But I'm going to say Rory McIlroy because it's just so it's so historic, and I want to see that. I don't disagree. Let me throw out a let me throw out a wild card. Max Homa. I think I would really enjoy a Max Homa win. I would love to see that. That would be good. What would be the best for for business for content? Ooh, um, would it be like Rory? You think Rory? What about like R- Rory Spieth playoff? What about what about Rom or Brooks or? See the the best for business is not always about who wins. <laughs> It's the French right, like, on the way. <laughs> the no, the the loss, like 2015, numbies, or a uh, 16, 16 like, numbies. The Jordan Spieth collapse is. So if you uh, if you have like, Rom beat McElroy on 18, and McElroy makes a bad decision somewhere, uh, that's man, you you cynic. Yeah, that's the cynic. I'm not rooting for that. That's the. That's what the business want. They there needs to be a good guy versus bad guy, and there needs to be a loss somewhere. Yeah, it would be Rory gagging, Ugh. like throwing one in the water on sixteen or something. Yeah. But I'll, wait, wait, wait! No, the, I'm wrong because best for business is simple. It's just not going to happen. So Tiger. that's Tiger would. Yeah, I, I already I already threw that like aside as not even yeah. worth yeah. the conversation. Well, aside from that, it's more fun to go in different directions. Who is the worst for business of like the top twenty five guys? I think it might be Tommy Fleetwood. Like Tommy <laughs> Fleetwood, he's not going to move the needle for like casual fans. It's going to be uh, like the the sickos are, would really love it, but like it's it's not going to be universally herald in any way like if a hideki were to win or anything like that like i think and i would love for tommy to do it but i just think it would be the worst for business i, I what think about it, like the patrick reed yeah oh, i was gonna say another patrick patrick oh, can't lie. that might be I, that would be pretty dull <laughs> <laughs> he'd serve uh like oatmeal and wonder bread at his champions <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I actually like Patrick Kelly. It's just I do too. Um, even like because I was even convinc- convincing myself like Wyndham, like Wyndham Clark winning again would be like holy crap. This guy might just be the greatest thing ever now. Yeah, right. It would, that would be a story for sure. Right. He won a major last year. Sam Burns would probably be pretty tough for most people. Yeah, but again, I I think this is really important. How the win happens is more important than the winner for the for the numbers. Breaking news: Ooh. Akshay Batia has just been added to the field on the sports books, and he has odds. And his odds to win are seventy five to one. They are the same as Sergio Garcia. They are between. Siwoo Kim, Corey Connors, Sung J.M., Adam Scott. That territory, Akshay Batia has just been added to. Missed cut. Really? He just scorched the. He just scorched everybody. I, he's playing really good golf at the moment. <laughs> I I, I love I love his game for Augusta National. I think it could be a place that really um, opens up his creativity suits his shot shape i'm a little worried about his shoulder Mm -hmm. (laughs) apparently he deals with it all the time is what it seemed like which does if if you talking about hockey like if you uh separate your shoulder it happens a lot more often after that well you're like you're like more susceptible to it like every time yeah yeah and it kind of gets less painful the more it happens or so i've heard a couple of my friends have that issue. It just like it pops out, <laughs> which is strange. So it'll probably be okay, but it's also a first timer. 
I think that group is a, probably a pretty accurate place to put him. Guys that could play really well, but probably aren't going to win. Okay. Next week, uh, Greg and I will do the Monday DFS preview at the normal time. The Tuesday preview will be later than normal at approximately 7 p.m. Eastern. And I say approximately because it is reliant on me and my travel because I'll be doing it after I get there. So I've got to like get off a plane, get my bag, rent a car, drive two and a half hours, set up my stuff. So so tentatively, 7 Eastern. So we may be late. Uh, yes. Don't, yes. Yes. Big potato. Big we potato might, is stewing right now. We might be a hair late because I'm not going to drive 150 miles an hour the entire time. I'll only do it for half the time. Um, and then the rest of the week, uh, we've got the round by round recaps, obviously, but we're doing some stuff on S CBS sports network. I think they're going to play the pods in certain places. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting stuff. We'll be out and there. I, and, and I've heard we are, uh, bringing back a, uh, a guest of the show. Is that correct? He's helping out this upcoming week or did i just completely make this up are you talking about jm yeah yeah joe musa the uh -huh. moose is loose yeah i don't know if i was supposed to say that but yes joe musa will uh be helping out and he's always great and you should be very nice to him he was upset the one time he came on and everyone was very mean to him and i've been trying to i've been trying to repair that <laughs> i've been trying to repair that relationship ever since i must not have been there it was in Phoenix and, and Joe hosted the first cut and everyone, and I appreciate the support all was like, who is this? Who is this guy? And I was like, it's okay. Joe's a good guy. Everybody loves him. Yeah. It's like your divorced mom brings home a new boyfriend for the first time. It's like, yes, you'll never be dad. Right. <laughs> Let's just all be nice to each other. Oh, geez. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Perfect. Let's all be nice to each other. Um, I'm going to tour the IBM Stat Center on Wednesday. Oh, nice. And see the new, how they do the, sh how the Masters does like the shot tracker and mm -hmm. uses AI and supercomputers or whatever. I got invited to that. I'm interested in seeing that. that tell, Watson, tell Watson I say what's up. I will tell Yeah, we, uh, we got some beef we got to brush under the rug. I'm sure Watson knows already. Yeah. That's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's he's heard it already. He's consumed it. It's on the internet now. Paul wants to know what there is to do in Augusta. I'm under the impression there is nothing to do in Augusta. It's Hooters, baby. Is there a Hooters in Augusta? Yeah, in a Waffle House. There you go. But I'm under the impression that it is like just the golf course and not much else going on. Um, yeah, I've only been to the golf course. I haven't explored much of the area. There's a, I think there's a military base uh, or fort or something. Mm -hmm. There is. Was it Fort Bragg or something? I think that's right. I, uh, I could be, I could be I, wrong. I have a colleague who is stationed out there. Crazy guy. Yeah. That's why I said colleague, hey. not friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you introduce, how would you introduce me as a friend or as a colleague? <laughs> You guys are friends. You guys are friends. Um, he's just like insane. He's in the military. Um, you got. I kind of like that. Hey, this is my colleague. <laughs> it's just like, know exactly exactly where you stand. <laughs> maybe okay. Maybe it's not Fort Bragg. Some someone said it, that might be in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah, that might be right. All right. I South or southeastern forts. You you could see the uh the house that Patrick Reed built, Augusta University, right? Check Augusta out the campus. State. Yeah, Augusta State. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. I'll build in some time to do that for sure. Okay, we'll be back next week, uh Monday. It'll be very quick turnaround because Greg and I will see you on Monday, and it is officially Masters Week. Enjoy very much. We are rocking and rolling. Big thanks, producer Debo tonight. Thank you, Debo, for doing all the hard work behind the scenes. That right there, Patrick McDonald. You can find him at P McDonald CBS. And Greg Ducharme is available at The Real GFD. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.